Let me, uh, we want to kind of record it, so we'll pass the mic around. Okay, it's the green one. Okay, okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> um, uh, pretty much everybody, ooh, pretty much everybody here knows about what's going on with my health. Um, I'll just say a little bit of that because I could be up here forever thanking God for the past year and a half. But um, let's see. I broke my right foot and I was stuck on a couch. Couldn't come to fellowship, couldn't come to church. And believe me, when you're isolated, the devil is on you constantly. You know? And then after that, I had fallen again and I broke four ribs and I hit my knee. And my ribs healed. But the knee never did. So I went to see an orthopedic doctor down in Greensburg. And she did an MRI. She thought it was going to be a tear of ACL or something like that. I'm shaking, I'm nervous. But um, it came back that it was this vascular necrosis disease is what she said it could be. But she thought it was a tumor. So she sent me to this cancer doctor, Dr. Weiss. And he looked at it and he said, no, it is that advascular necrosis disease. And how they explained to me what it is, is that an apple, the rotten part, you dig it out, you don't want to eat it. So the inside of my bones are dying. They're supposed to be like Rice Krispies, but mine was like white cardboard. So it, it was pretty bad. And, um, but it went on to that and had the surgery for that one. That went well, and then I had to have surgery on my ankles because it's in both tibias and both ankles. So I'm trying. I was trying to put off the ankle till the end of summer. That didn't work. The pain was too bad. So I went and had it done, and I have to say that's the worst pain I ever felt in my life. And I cried for like two days in the hospital. And when I got home, I cried out to God for three or four nights. I guess it was. Cried just tears, and um. All of a sudden. I don't know if it was a vision, I know it wasn't a dream. I saw a cross. And I just stared at that cross as, and like for 30 seconds. And then 30, after 30 seconds, it showed Jesus on a cross. And I stared and I was like thinking to myself, wait, I'm not sleeping, I'm not dreaming. I felt my face, felt tears, I was awake. And then I stared back again and what I saw next was a hand reaching down to me, wanting to help me up. And to me, that was God letting me know that he was there with me the whole time, and he's going to help me up when I fall. And he's just, you know, I give all glory, honor, and praise to him because I would have never made it through this year and a half if it wasn't for him. I mean, he's brought me through. He's given me strength. I got days where I got depressed and just wanted to stay in a room because I knew all I could do was go on the couch. You know, but God was there saying, come on, you ain't going to do this. You ain't going to let the devil get you down. You know, come on, get up. And he would always do that and give me encouragement. He always put people in my life who would help me the most as I needed it. Blessed me with them. Pastor Carmen, Brother John, come down and prayed with me when I really needed it. And they, they showed up. It was just unbelievable. You know, it was great. And I just, I can't thank God enough for what he's done. You know, just... He deserves all the oil. Jesus is so worthy. You know, to come here and live on this earth and not sin. You know, it's just, but I don't know. I just want to give thanks to him with a grateful heart. Because he's done a lot for me. And I thank him. And I thank all you for your prayers, for your love, and your concern. You're all blessings to me. Thank you. I had a surprise today. Um, my daughter, well, she called the other day and she said, Mom, there's a package coming for you. And I said, really? And she said, yes. Her husband loved me enough to send me a snowblower. So now I could snowblow everybody's yard. <laughs> I just, I, my brother-in-law, I, I had the other kind. This is electric one. I had the other kind. And I'm telling you, what did you think he did? He went out and put, um, he bought gasoline. Oh, he thought he was so smart. But you have to have oil. So I didn't have one for a long time. But 
he called and he went up. That's my son in law. Woohoo! I like to thank God for, uh, I said in my life a long time, Matt, I've never seen a miracle. I just like to see a miracle. And as most of you know, maybe six, seven years ago, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, moderate to severe. You know, what do they know, right? So I went to the doctor, and they give me methotrexate. That made me sick as a dog. Didn't take that. Then they give me salicylazine. Didn't take that. But every time I come home, I went to Dr. God. And he says in Isaiah 53, by his stripes we are healed. No methotrexate, no sulfasalazine. So then I was taking some infusions. And I really and truly, I, I couldn't make a fist. And sometimes I couldn't actually grab the steering wheel because it hurt very badly. I and mean, whatever I had, it hurt. You know, and, and putting my shoes on hurt. And, and playing the guitar hurt. And playing the bass hurt. And playing the drums hurt. But I'll never give them up. I'll never, ever, ever give them up because I kept, I kept playing and I kept listening to what the doctor said. Then I had another treatment. Then I had another infusion. But then I come back and I would read Galatians 3:13 through 14. Curse of sin, death, disease has been broken. So I thought that's that's really wonderful. So then uh, I finally realized there was a times like I thought, wow. I can grab that steering wheel and it doesn't hurt anymore. Like, wow, that's pretty neat. So then I thought, I can put my shoes on and really tie the laces. So, and my son, when my son came home, he lives in Delaware, he came home one time and he says to me, Mom, why do you have all these little glasses in your cupboard? Because I couldn't hold on to anything. If I'd take a big glass, it would fall right out of my hand and on the ground. And I got tired of wiping things up. So uh, I've thrown quite a few of those little glasses away because I'm a big girl now. I can hold a big glass. And, you know, so that's, that's wonderful. But every time that I had an improvement, I just kept saying, this is wonderful. So then, you know, I read Psalms 107, we are healed of the Lord. Wait on the Lord, renew your strength, for I will restore health unto thee and heal thee of thy wounds. Desire all the above things that you may prosper and be in health. God's word is medicine to all flesh. Now I can make a complete total tight and there were times when I wore a brace a lot of you remember I had it on my arms when I was playing I, I threw them away I mean I don't, I don't need those and I can tie my shoes and I can I can play I can take care of the house I can take care of whomever I have to I didn't realize that I was healed I didn't put that all together until I realized man I don't hurt I don't have pain so I thank God for that and uh, however he healed me, whenever he healed me, it's, it's just a magnificent thing. So I can no longer say that I've never seen a miracle because he, he brought out a miracle in me. And I thank him for it every day. And if anybody would like to have a copy of these, these are healing scriptures. And I got these from uh, Dawn and Barb. Whenever Barb was going through her cancer, she would do these healing scriptures. And, you know, so if you want the doctor in your house, in your room, in your car, right beside you, in your Bible, wherever you go, uh, I would be more than glad to share these with anybody who would like them. And thank you very much. Well, I'd like to thank God for the protection on my life. If there was one kid who should have been beaten up all the time, it should have been me. With the disease I should have, I should have broken bones. I should have had my head stomped in. But God protected me on that. Every time something came around in my life that something should have happened, I noticed something didn't happen. I moved down to high rise. A lot of people tried to do things to me. They tried to get me to they tried to get me thrown out. What happened was they either had to leave themselves, or they got sick. There was a lady that lived above me twice. She tried to hit me with a car. She tried to uh, mace me. She tried to punch me, but God protected me. One time she had a she lived right above me, and she tried to water my apartment by flooding her apartment. But what happened was. The water divided in half and come back together again and hit the, ca and hit the cabinets below in the, in the uh, high-rises kitchen. 
and they were new cabinets. And they, were, they water, got watered down, and they broke. But she had to pay for all those new cabinets. And there is a man down there who keep on throwing the Bible to me and everything. I, I tried to ignore him to talk to him. I had to give him an answer. But anyways, he went to the hospital. When he came back, he had to use a cane. He went again to the hospital after he tried to do it. He was on oxygen. Next time it happened, his sons got cut selling, selling $25,000 worth of marijuana. I st still treated him good. And the last thing that happened to him, he took a stroke. And we don't know where he's at today. All we know is he's in a nursing home. And High Rise has been giving me a reputation down there. And they're not picking on me alone anymore. They're afraid to. I just tell them it's, it's God. I tell them I have angels protecting me, but they think I'm crazy. But you don't need to see angels. All you need to do is rely on their protection. So, Lord, I want to thank you very much. I, I guess the reason I was crying is because I, in the morning when I was, everybody called and complained about the offices. They didn't like anybody that was cleaning and stuff. And I was, I said, Lord, I don't have nothing to be thankful for. And that I feel bad that I said that, but I thank God that He forgives us and He knows what we're going through. But I thank God that we have so much to be thankful for. That by the end of the day, I was, you know, singing praises and and back to a little bit back to normal <laughs> but um you know I, I i thought lord i can't believe i even said that sometimes we get so frustrated we don't know what to do but i thank god that you know after i have a prayer tonight with everybody that i i am thankful we have a a body of believers that we can just be ourselves there aren't that many places you can go that you can just lay your hair down you know be yourself and if you're having a good day everybody's with you if not you know we uh, we pray with each other and i thank god most of all for for this church and i think we've been here 18 or 19 years and we <laughs> we've learned yeah it's been a while you know we're, we're learning <laughs> the, the two main things we've learned from pastor and sister rose is shut up and pray <laughs> so i thank god i'm learning that the hard way but you know we are thankful for this place and for everybody praying for us and uh but you know by the time i we were done singing i thought no i have a lot to be thankful for and let's thank god for the body of christ I guess if uh, uh, I hate mics. All right. I guess um, their God must have a purpose. I was born during a time when abortion was popular, because so I guess Mom was like 16. Never met her. And then when I was 36, I got cancer. Cancer that only happens to people in like their 70s. Hmm. Turns out it was familial. Who would have guessed that one? But. Uh, and I went through some times after I got through that where I thought I'm on top of the world. I might only have a couple years to live. I'm going to live it. I was a bartender. They tried to put me on magazines because I was like a top area bartender and flirt beyond words, I guess. I was paying my mortgage, raising my kids, riding Harleys all around the United States. I was having a good old time. And my parents got sick. Caught my old band sheet and threw him out and then I was dating somebody and things were doing good again lost my good job over 1200 bucks a month off of that job I was making some good money parents got sick I was taking care of them working two jobs I slept a couple hours a week and they got sicker and I kept praying you know when I was uh, going through cancer I was listening to Joyce Meyer between you know, naps. If you've been through a lot of chemo, you know naps are a genuine part of life. <laughs> and I kept praying, and I kept praying, and I kept praying. I kept going, okay, new devil, new level. I can do this. I can do this. 
That got sicker and sicker. He died. When uh, both my parents finally died, the title to my house, which they had held the title for me so I could get my chemo. Well, you know what happens when you live in a house like that? You get kicked out of it when it goes into probate for months and months. There was me, my two kids, dog, cat, and then uh, my son's fiance, because she was coming to America to get her education. We were pretty much out on the street. God's favor, we were taken in by somebody I started dating, which led to me going to nursing school, which led to this one really neat girl. You know who she is. She kept saying, you know, you got to come to this church. You got to come to this church. I'm like, I don't have time. I'm going to school. I'm in nursing school. I'm going to work. I got kids. I don't have time for this. And she kept doing that. And she kept being the one person in class that I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I was a really mean person for a while. She was the one person I could put up with and didn't want to pretty much knock upside the head because all I wanted to do was just be angry and miserable and do my classes and everyone could just go away. Well, I went one sermon. I walked away from a guy who was worth about a million bucks. He said, you're not going to church again. Really? Yeah. And so I'm here. If it weren't for God stepping in every situation, I wouldn't be here think where I'd be. Um, I had, um, I've had a lot of health issues in the past, and God kind of found me through, through her with a dating site. I thought I was going to find a girlfriend. I ended up finding, getting a wife and God, so I ended up on the better half. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it definitely turned out for the better for me. You know, I was in a Catholic church. Both of us were kind of, you know, brought up in a Catholic church. And I was telling Sister Cheryl before as yourself, you were in a Catholic church, and it's it's a shame that how many people really you miss the mark. They don't. They give this much sermon and talk about their own life and how and it just it's more ritual and mundane and just you kind of gloss over it but the church we were at in Weirton the one that you went to we took invited you to he is really anointed in the word and kind of just you know after you start hearing it you, you, it brings it out of you and then you just start getting more and more into it you want I went from a guy going to church you know I joke with the CE Catholics you know the Christmas and Easter and now I get you know I'm like church three four times a week what are you talking about now I'm like wanting more and more and more you know so praise the Lord <laughs> if, uh, okay well praise the Lord there's some good testimonies and I thought it's good just to take take a minute to to share what God has done Dale okay I want to give thanks to each and every one of you. I love, I love you all. And I have watched the Holy Spirit growing, and I thank, I thank Him for carrying me through so many difficult times. And. In short, there are no coincidences. There are there are none. And I am so blessed to have a Christian family as each and every one of you are. I am so blessed to have a great wife, um, so a great pastor, great sisters brothers I mean I, there's so much to be thankful for but above all I thank the Father God for Jesus and just as 
Lisa said, you know, going 30, 30 some years without sinning, I can't, you know, like, I, I, you ever tried going 30 minutes without falling? Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm, Thanksgiving means thank you to each and every one of you, and above all, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. That's all right. Okay. Praise God. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. We will give you time if anybody else wants to share a testimony. Feel free. I'm going to share a little one. I'm going to read some, read some God's word, but uh, we're thankful. You know, last year was kind of a tough year for us. For Rose, she had to go through some treatments. Uh, she just had a CAT scan. It came back clear. Everything is good. We're thankful for that. We're thankful for to God, and I'm thankful that it's just been uh, kind of a challenging year in a lot of different ways. And uh, this year, and it's this year's coming to an end. <laughs> Thank the Lord. We're going to start a new year, and I guess the challenges never stop. But one thing I've seen, you know, when when you see God move in people's lives, and I hear your testimonies, and I know what person, you know, personally because I'm your pastor, so I talk with all of you. And, and I, know, I see what God is doing. It would be nice if we could say, well, you trust in the Lord and all the problems will go away. But it's, it's a whole lot better to see people come through them and, and grow and be increased and be established. Because that's what this life is all about. When we go to be with him, all our problems will be ended. You know, when we, when we go to be with the Lord, we won't, have to, we won't have to pray. We won't have to trust. We won't have to cry out and say, oh, God, where are you? Because we're going to be with them. But from here to there, well, we go through those times. We go through those times where we say, God, what are you doing? I'm sure every one of us have, have been there. We go through those times when we cry out in pain and say, God, I'm not sure if I can get through this. But I've seen God bring, bring you through things. I've seen God bring changes in people's lives that only he could do. That only he could do because... We're, you know, I thank God for you all because you're sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that's the main thing. Because, you know, I can, I can tell people what I think. You can, you can counsel. We go to each other for counsel and prayer and we're stressed out. But only God can affect a change. If we're sensitive to what he does, what he, when we hear his voice, then he begins to move on the inside of us. And uh, I've seen breakthroughs. And I believe God is preparing us as a body for more, you know, more challenges. <laughs> I hate to say, I'd like to say, man, oh, you know, all the problems are done with it. But uh, every, 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 every battle just prepares us for the next one. Every victory. When we see God gives us a victory, he's just preparing us for the next one. So I thank God for that. I thank God for my wife. Thank God that she puts up with me. She's a good, she's a good wife. She's good for me. She lets me have my little bad habits. Now I'm not talking about anything sinful or nothing. I'm, I'm talking about leaving my empty water bottles in my room. She, she doesn't come into my room. She just leaves me. Once in a while, she'll walk in there, my little, my little office, and she doesn't yell at me. So I'm thankful for that. So anyway. God's blessed me with a, with a great wife, a great pastor's wife. She really is. And uh, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for all of you. I'm thankful for all the folks that God has given me in my flock. And I'm thankful for the ministries that go on in church. Uh, the things that you do because God tells you to do them. You don't get paid. You know, the meals, the music, the dance, the teaching, whatever. I thank God. You know, when we first started, we didn't have anybody doing anything. Huh? And we would pray, God, send us some workers. Well, thank God he sent us some workers. And uh, faithful ones. You're faithful. And we appreciate that.